friends, welcome back to my channel. In honor of this new school year, I wanted to give you guys 10 homeschool tips for if you're new at homeschooling or you just want a little bit of encouragement if you've been homeschooling for a while i hope that you will get some encouragement from these 10 tips i am a homeschooling mom of five four of them are in school one of them is over there um, at the table hopefully being quiet hopefully being quiet while i film this video um i'm trying out a new setup in this new house um, trying to figure out where is the best place for me to film my sit down videos. I don't know if this will be permanent, but today here's how it is. I'm realizing as I'm looking in the viewfinder how much like depth there is for how much I have to clean up and pick up off the floor before filming a video, which I haven't really done today. So it's not the tidiest back there, but try to just look at me and not what's back there. And we'll get into these 10 tips. Tip number one is to have a plan or a schedule. As much as you don't need to stick to that every day, I personally am a planner and I like to have a plan for what I want to accomplish in our school year. I have a notebook where I keep track. I love to write lists and everything that we want to accomplish. I also write out a rough schedule, especially with, with homeschooling multiple kids. I like to have some sort of schedule written out of how I want our homeschool day to look and obviously it doesn't always happen, but just to make sure that we're doing our best to cover everything we should be covering and who's supposed to be doing what at what time because some kids have more independent time, some need me more. I like to have a schedule, a rough draft of how our days should go. Tip number two, kind of the opposite. Tip number two kind of goes along with that, but the opposite. Be flexible. Um, don't get all uptight and nervous if you can't stick to your schedule. Be flexible. Some days you might start the day with math and that's all you do that day is do math. Or some days all we do is read alouds and it's not always going to go perfectly. So understand that as a homeschooling mom, you have to be flexible. Tip number three, you don't have to recreate school. That is a big one. Um, most of us, not me, I was homeschooled, but most people grew up going to school, very traditional um, education and going to school and nine to three. This is how we do it. We have our lunch break. We have our, we sit down at a desk, yada, yada, yada. They have that in their heads. And so they think I'm gonna bring that to our home and do that same routine structure desks the whole nine yards but we'll do it at home and some people do that and that's fine but you do not have to homeschooling can look completely different than traditional school so don't think that just because you are homeschooling that it has to look just like school but in your home it can be however you want homeschool to look Number four is to combine kids in subjects. And as you have more kids starting school, for me, I have found that to be a necessity. So we have reading is their own, everybody does their own thing, math, everybody does their own thing, and writing, everybody does their own thing. Really, other than that, we combine. We do history together. We do geography together. We do a lot of subjects together. And that is really the beauty in homeschooling is that my fourth grader can learn from the sci same science book that my first grader is learning from. Totally. There's no issues in doing that. They can be learning the same thing. They don't need to be studying their own grade level at every single subject. So to save time, really even just to get all of our schoolwork accomplished, we need to combine kids in subjects. Tip number five I've learned is to enjoy the process. I, my type A personality, um, is totally like, okay, we need to get this done today. We need to get X, Y, and Z done, three pages done. We need to have the problems completed. We need to get all this done. If we're not completing it, I can feel like that is the end goal and we haven't had a successful day if that's not done. But I need to take a step back and realize I need to just enjoy the process. And if it's taking a little bit more time for my child to um, learn a certain concept in math, let's say, rather than like, hey, we got to learn this quick. So we still got to get on and do one more page today. Um, I need to just relax and not stress about getting so much done and just enjoy. Let's um, do something hands on to help it reinforce this fact. Let's watch a YouTube video that helps reinforce these times tables or help um, understand some new concept they're learning. 
don't stress about completing the work. Really just enjoy watching your kids absorb the information and digest the information and just enjoy watching them learn, even if it doesn't look like how you thought it would look. Number six, take days off. As a homeschooling family, you totally have the right to take days off wherever you see fit to take days off. We don't have snow days. We don't have PD days. We don't have um, report card days. There are a lot of days that we don't need to have in our homeschool year because we're homeschooling, but Take days off where you need to. You totally have the flexibility to do that. You have every reason to do that. And sometimes it's just fun to take a random day off. The kids love it. You can plan something fun. Don't forget the beauty of homeschooling is that you do have that flexibility. And if you need to take days off, do it. We love going on vacation in the middle of the school year because it's, for one, it's less expensive if you can go during the school year. It is easier to get the right flights or find a place to stay at. All of it just is so much easier if you are booking holidays when nobody else is, when the majority of people are not. So if you need to take days off, do it. If you need it for your own sanity, just do it. My next tip that I have just started incorporating into our homeschool is letting the older kids help out. Sometimes I can look at my schedule, my loose schedule for the day and my checklist and all that needs to get done and I think how can I stretch myself um, to help these four children all at their different grade levels and all the real um, assistance that they need as well as my baby who obviously needs me. How can I stretch myself out to do everything I need to do? And I've just started letting my older kids help out a bit and let me tell you, it's awesome. I will have my younger um, child who's learning to read, read to one of the older kids. Why not? My older kids know how to read. They can sit there and listen as the younger kids read to them totally takes a load off my shoulders. I will have the kids say their multiplication facts to each other. I will even have the older ones sometimes check their younger siblings work. Um, and it is so helpful if I can just give them little jobs that help them out that they also feel really accomplished and they feel really mature that they can help me in that way. Number eight, not all learning is book work. Again, this is one that I need to remind myself of all the time. Don't judge your child's learning just by the books that they've completed, the worksheets that they've done. That is not even close to all their learning. It's actually, I think, a very small part of their learning is what you see physical copies completed. They are learning real life skills all the time. They are learning so much just through conversation, through read alouds, through going out and working outside, through helping you in the kitchen and measuring, and they are learning so, so much that does not have to be physical proof of books finished. Number nine, spend time reading aloud. I love reading aloud to my kids and my kids love to be read aloud too. I read a book recently that if you haven't read, you should read and it's called The Read Aloud Family by Sarah McKenzie and she goes in depth into how important reading aloud time is and then she also goes into something I found really eye-opening in that your reading aloud time can cover almost every subject of your kids' learning. They are learning so much about history, they are learning about geography, they are learning about um, just kindness and the way you treat people, they are learning grammar, they are learning composition, they are learning so much just by you reading to them. And this does not need to be just nonfiction. You can be reading a fantasy novel, something fiction, and your kids can really be learning something from each one of those subjects just from hearing you read. And it's always great if your kids can be learning and enjoying the process of learning because they need to choose that they want to learn. Because if your kids don't want to learn, it's really hard or almost impossible to make them learn something. They have to be consciously deciding that they want to learn and that is when they will learn. So read aloud. We will read aloud usually 30 to 45 minutes a day on a um, 
fiction book, a read aloud book, but we also do our history as read aloud, we do science as read aloud, we do a lot of reading. But if there's a day that, I don't know, it just kind of feels like an off school day, their individual subjects just aren't going well, the kids are having a hard time with whatever, some of those days I'll say, let's just read aloud. And in the morning we'll start reading aloud, we'll take a couple of hours and all we do is read aloud. And that, um, again, they are really learning through that and it just is a really enjoyable time. The kids sit down and play quietly or they do art as I read. And I really, really love, I think I'll always have good memories of that close-knit time where I am reading to them. Number 10 is that there is more than one way to educate. And I think all of us have this idea, this mindset of this is how we learn. And so for instance, people that are not used to the whole homeschooling thing, um, people that I'm sure have given comments to you, they're like, how do you homeschool? Like, I know that you're supposed to send your kids to a classroom and this is where they sit and they sit in their desks and they do all their work and then they have homework and that is how education is supposed to look. How do you homeschool? Like, what do you, where do you get your curriculum? And they are just clueless about it, which is fine. I don't mind the opportunity to open their eyes to how homeschooling can look. But even in the realm of homeschool, there are so many ways to homeschool. And I've heard people say, oh, they unschool. How do they, you know, whatever. Like, they're not sure how that works or they're judging those people thinking that, um, it's not the right way to homeschool. The same can be said for traditional homeschooling and you think, oh, that you're too uptight, you should be looser, you should be more flexible and every different method of homeschooling is beautiful. Every different method of education can work. So don't judge others if they homeschool in a different way than you. Every child can learn differently, every parent can educate their kids differently and can still produce a well-educated individual. And again, don't let others judge you. You choose how you want to homeschool. Don't try to, I said to not recreate school, but also don't recreate your friend's homeschool. Don't recreate someone else you've seen on YouTube. Homeschool how it works best for your family. I've known people who only school in the evenings and that's just how, they're, how it works. Maybe the parents are working and they get home and they school their kids in the evening. Some people do. Um, I know a couple of channels here on YouTube I've seen where they have like outdoor time and free time in the morning, running free, um, a lot of time out in nature, and in the afternoon, that's when they sit and do their schoolwork. And it can look so different for everybody. Don't judge, don't let yourself be judged. Understand that there are so many ways to educate your child. So those are my 10 tips for today. Please let me know what you think if you have any other tips. Um, these are just 10 I thought of. There are obviously so many more I could come up with and maybe I'll try to think of some more and do another video similar to this. I enjoyed trying to come up with different things that I have learned through homeschooling and um, I hope that these will help you as well. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. I've kind of had a break from doing homeschooling videos over the summer but now that it's the fall I'm ready to get right back into doing more more videos on homeschooling so subscribe to my channel if you want to see more make sure you share this video if you have a friend or someone that you want to share these tips with as well and I'll see you guys next time bye